There's a direct connection between how routing works and the structure of the IP addresses that are used during the routing process. And, and this is particularly important for performance. So here's an internet router, and when packets arrive on one of its links, all it's doing over and over, all day long, is making this simple decision. If a packet arrives on this link, should I send it out on link one or link two? And I'm just doing that over and over and over and over again. And I want to be able to do that fast, because the faster these routers can work, the more traffic they can handle, and the faster the core internet gets. If the router is slow, packets will start to queue up, those packets might get dropped because of other problems. So it's really important that routers be able to make this decision very, very fast. And routers are actually these incredibly specialized pieces of hardware that are designed to do this very, very, very quickly. But they need help from the IP address. So let's think about how this is going to work. This router, in order to make this decision, is going to maintain a table. This is called a routing table. This routing table is going to have some number of entries in it. And it turns out that the number of entries in this routing table is really important. If the number of entries in this routing table gets too large, then the routing table can't um, fit in the memory used by these special pieces of hardware that the router wants to use to make the, this process really, really, really fast. So there are hardware limitations that come into play here. Now let's think about the IP addresses themselves. So we know that there are 2 to the 32 possible IP addresses. Uh, this is a 32-bit value. 2 to the 32 is about 4 billion. Um, so 4 billion would, if I had to have a routing table with 4 billion entries in it, this would be much, much, much too big. So I can't make routing decisions based on the entire IP address. That would lead to a routing table that would be far too big. Routers would be far too slow. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make routing decisions based on a prefix. So let me explain how that works. Um, the prefix is some beginning part of this IP address. So let's go through a simple example. Let's say that this router only makes decisions based on the first um, byte of the IP address. The first byte is 2 to the 8th. Sorry, that's, we're going the wrong way. The first byte is only 2 to the 8th, which is only 256. So if all I did was look at A, and I had a table that mapped um, all the different values here from 1 to 255, or from 0 to 255, 0 is not valid, but uh, my table would have 256 entries in it. That's good. That's a reasonably sized routing table. There's only one problem. Um, I want to support way more than 256 different autonomous systems on the internet, so this is not enough. Okay, well, let's say that we look at uh, not just A, but B. So we look at the first um, two bytes of the uh, IP address. The first two bytes have 2 to the 16th uh, different possibilities. That's from 0 to 65k or so. Um, so now my routing table is 65 kilobytes. That's still pretty good. Um, but again, 65 kilobytes isn't quite enough uh, to route all of the different potential autonomous systems out there. And so actually, routers will look all the way down to the third part of that IP address. And the third part of that IP address leads to about 4 million entries in the routing table. Now, in reality, routing tables aren't that big. And that's because some computer networks um, only have prefixes that only use the first part. So for example, MIT was one of the first uh, internet adopters. And they have what's referred to as a class A network. So MIT has a series of internet addresses. They own the entire IP address space that starts with, I'm just going to make this up, 20. So everything that starts with 20, I know to send to MIT's autonomous system. So that's nice. That's just uh, I've, So essentially, there's all of these hosts. There's 4 million hosts that are served by a single entry in my routing table. So that's pretty useful. At UB, UB has what's referred to as a class B network. The class B network has, um, starts, has the two dots, uh, dotted parts of the prefix. I didn't say that very clearly. In our case, our prefix is 128.205. And that all gets sent to the University of Buffalo. So now in this case, I have 65,000 IP addresses that the router only needs one entry in its routing table to route. And so the, essentially what I'm doing is I'm, I'm creating a hierarchical structure of the IP address, and I'm using that to make this routing table much smaller. So uh, modern routers have a mixture of 
both class A, B, and C, and these new what are referred to as classless um, uh, addresses as well. But the goal here is to make sure that this table doesn't get very big, because once the table starts to get too big, then there are performance problems. And this has actually happened recently. There was actually a point at which uh, these tables got big and that caused too big for certain routers and that caused a certain amount of slowdown on the internet. Um, but this is the goal here. So the router wants to make a decision using the smallest amount of information possible. To do that, I create hierarchies within the IP address space so that IP addresses that start with a certain prefix all end up at the same autonomous system. Now this approach creates other problems, particularly with usage of the IP address space, but this is how we keep routing tables small by hierarchically organizing IPv4 addresses.